live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest. I hope everybody is having a good and healthy start to their weekend. Looking forward to relaxing and being productive. In this class, we are looking at speaking part three, the more challenging questions for the speaking interview, focusing on giving complete and clear answers to get those high maximum band scores possible. Hi, Rimshaw. Hi, Rangana. Hi, Tunde. Shaik, good to see many of our regular students ready to learn. Uh, while we wait for some of your peers, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there. For general IELTS, please check us out at G-I-E-L-T-S help. Dot com on both of these websites we have lots and lots of help for you now this is a speaking class everyone so make sure to speak and repeat it's great when you're writing responses into the chat that's fantastic make sure also to say them especially when I give you feedback and correct hi Angelina hi Rajveer hi Kurush Angelina I'm looking forward to our practice speaking interview session in a little bit later on today. I'm um, just going to show you again the websites here. This is the academic one here with the blue background and this is the general one here with the green background. You can click that big red button to join on both sites. And once more, uh, especially because we're focusing on speaking today to all of the new uh, people here, on our websites, you can practice your speaking for absolutely free with other IELTS students. I'm just going to show you where. Uh, so when you create an account, you can create a free account by clicking the green button. Uh, you log into your My Student account. No, oh, and I seem to have lost my internet connection. Just give me one second here. Let me see if I can get that back. Hmm, hmm. So sad, no internet connection. All right, well, I'll have to show that to you next time then I'm not gonna play around with that today. Uh, who knows why the internet is out on that computer. But anyway, uh, for those of you who have internet connections, uh, in your My Student account, there is a student partner speaking button and you can click on that and then it will let you do video or audio chat with other students. So make sure to uh, check that out. Um, you can see that on a couple of the videos on the YouTube channel as well. So I won't uh, waste time troubleshooting in the class for sure. Um, anyway, check that out. And uh, if you have questions, if something's not clear or you can't find that option, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. The caboose says, yes, I know where to find it. I see more and more people using it. So that's fantastic. Okay, that's great. I'm happy to see that. Um, okay, students, so this class is the last one for this week. And then, of course, I will be back again on Wednesday with more classes at the same time. So I'll put next week's schedule again on the YouTube community board uh, later today. Uh, so you can check that out with the uh, topics as well. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's get into some speaking. Now, um, hopefully some of you were also watching the last class that was for members. It was on speaking part two, uh, cue card. That cue card was asking about a time that you were doing some volunteer work. And we just uh, responded to that about volunteer work that we did to help uh, the needy uh, with food and water and some clothes. So if you saw that, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, again, uh, it's really important to do a good job on part two because part three questions connect with part two and you want to make connections in your answers. That's one way to give complete and fluent answers is making those connections. Okay. So uh, we're going to get right into it. And as we uh, answer some of these questions today, I'll give you some uh, feedback on strategy and what to do, what not to do. So continuing right away from part two, let's get as much practice in today as possible. The examiner will say, okay, your two minutes is up. Now I will take back the card with the questions, the note paper, the pencil. We will continue with part three 
I will ask you some more questions uh, related to the topic of part two. No surprise, the examiner says, let's talk about volunteering. Now, even if it's not your cup of tea, you have to believe and imagine that it is your cup of tea because your goal, of course, is to get that good band score so that you can go on to your next step in life, to school or immigration. Okay. All right. So let's talk about volunteering. Let's get right into this first question. What are the most common ways that people volunteer? Hi, Min. Welcome aboard to our group of members. Send me an email. All right. Um, so give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Hint, when you're thinking about your two, three good ideas for your part two uh, speaking, they will become very useful for these kinds of questions in part three. So for those of you who watched the class just now, an hour ago, uh, hopefully you remember some of those answers to this question. What are the most common ways that people uh, volunteer their time? So Kevin Bowie says the most popular volunteer work uh, are either distributing sustenance to the homeless, as I just described, or giving protective gear like masks and hand sanitizers to the public for free. Okay, that's good. Uh, Bisser says people can do what they love to help other people. For example, some people may love to play football and they can take part in a charity football tournament. Uh, careful Bisser, that's off topic. So I know you're answering from your heart, but sometimes answering from the heart is off topic. So be careful about that. Okay. Here the question is what are the most common ways people volunteer? Not necessarily what they love to do the most. Okay, so careful with that, uh, Bisser. Stay really targeting and focusing on the question. Okay, uh, Zen says there are a lot of ways to which one can offer uh, a helping hand. It could be either to develop society by helping the needy with amenities like I did, distributing uh, food during a pandemic, as well as, so Zen, get to the point, make sure you don't spend too much time just... Uh, generalizing the uh, situation S instead get right to the point okay all right so Swati says the most common ways people can volunteer are distributing food uh, tutoring good so, so Swati remembered another one that we discussed which was teaching right okay Oni Seem says well volunteering is under a visible expansion nowadays, thus there are a, uh, many modalities of pursuing such actions. The most common are traveling to poorer countries and offering educational assistance. Okay, students, plural. Uh, again, a reminder, when the question is plural, what are ways, you really have to target at least two, hopefully three or four different answers for this one, especially because uh, there are lots of different ways people volunteer their time, okay? So uh, Pooja says most people volunteer in a number of ways, like working for uh, NGOs, teaching the underprivileged, planting trees, cleaning the beach, helping the disabled. Okay, good, Pooja. So you remembered many of them. Pooja, no ETC, no etc. Okay, just name three or four and then stop. Of course, people usually know there are more and more ways. You don't have to mention that, okay? It's just important that you target three or four key ways and then go on from there. Don't try to get too fancy at the beginning of each part, students. Instead, start a little bit simpler, start a little bit easy, and then you can get more elaborate once you get more comfortable, okay? All right, so... Uh, start simple, start slow, then speed up and get into more details. I explained that uh, pacing a little bit in our most recent uh, HD video on the uh, channel as well. Uh, Rajweer says, aside from distributing sustenance needs, which I just mentioned, people frequently do volunteer work through teaching and helping the terminally ill people in hospitals. Very good, Rajveer. Very, very good. Okay, so Rajveer is focusing right away on connection and on one, two, three ways of helping people, okay? Shweta, thank you for sending me love from India. All right, um, so 
Well, here's my answer. Well, as I had just mentioned, one of the most common ways to give a helping hand is by assisting homeless people. Aside from that, other types of frequent volunteer efforts include cleaning up nature, like the local beach, from plastic pollutants, as well as teaching children or refugees the local language. And another that pops to mind is caring for animals, such as stray dogs and cats. Okay, so lots of ways, visualize it and go into details as you start moving with your language, okay? Uh, notice that uh, present perfect right away as well. This is why it's good to make that connection to what you just talked about because it gives you another opportunity to build that grammar range mark in the exam by including that past perfect, okay? So uh, repeat after me. What are the most common ways that people volunteer? Well, as I had just mentioned, one of the most common ways to give a helping hand is by assisting homeless people. Aside from that, other types of frequent volunteer efforts include cleaning up nature, like the local beach from plastic pollutants, as well as teaching children or refugees the local language. And another that pops into my mind is caring for animals such as stray dogs and cats. All right, so then you'll get the follow-up question. Now, if I don't catch everybody's response, of course, there's many of us in this class, don't worry, just keep writing. I promise I will try to catch different people at different times. The most important is that you're practicing, okay? So don't just write, also speak. All right, here we go. Uh, the follow-up question, which of these is the most rewarding and why? So which of these is the most rewarding and why? Uh, part three, follow-up questions are almost guaranteed. Uh, in this way, it's more of a conversation, but it's like a professional conversation. So it's not a casual conversation. It's a professional conversation. Okay. All right, uh, Roshni Kunte says, hmm, I believe all of these are valuable, but I will go with giving money because that emphasizes more of the individual respect. Additionally, a need can take what they primarily want, such as the needy. Mm, Roshni, that's a little bit confusing. Also, Roshni, giving money is not the same as volunteering. That's, uh, we refer to that more as donating. So donation and volunteering are not the same. Don't confuse those two because then the examiner will think, hmm, okay, this person's talking about donating and not talking about volunteering. Donating time is volunteering, but that's tricky. So careful not to confuse volunteering with donating. Okay. Hina says, it's hard to specify which one of these is the most rewarding because in my point of view, we do charity uh, in a sense of what we feel our society needs and is the most beneficial for life. Okay, Hina, uh, that's okay, but you are sitting on the fence. And even though it might be true, I definitely suggest taking a position, okay? Students, it's always better to take a position on these questions than to sit on the fence. That means to be neutral or undecided. Okay, undecided answers are difficult to explain 
they can be very confusing even if you're uh, responding in your own native language and they're less interesting so they make for um, less of a conversation all right so careful with that all right uh, Pooja says I believe that keeping beaches safe from plastic may be regarded as the most rewarding as it prevents bio magnification and helps uh, save ocean life Okay, Pooja, I like your answer. It's a position. We don't all have to agree with it, but it's a good position. And uh, it makes sense to me. Okay. Uh, Shaikh says, I believe that all of these are important. Um, but I think for me, giving uh, food for the poor is the most rewarding as it alleviates uh, so much suffering in the public. Okay, Shaikh. Again, some real-time correction there. Pay attention to that. Students, when I correct in real time what you're writing, check the time in the video, make a note so that you can go back. And if I'm not mistaken, you can actually see the comments now in the live chat as well, okay? So check those out, all right? Jivan Kaur, I believe that providing needy people with essential materials is the most rewarding as they are not able to buy these services and necessities. And if somebody is doing this without being selfish, um, they will feel gratified to see the smiles on the faces of uh, people going through such difficult times. Okay, that was good, Jivan. A little bit of additive uh, expression there for you as well. Uh, Mediha says, personally, I'm truly fond of every kind of volunteer work as they are all immensely uh, rewarding. However, if I had to choose one of these, I'd say helping the needy in terms of providing food and medical aid because it alleviates suffering, okay? Suffering. So when you alleviate suffering, alleviate means to stop or render it uh, non-existent okay so um, you can start so again leading expressions are okay I know sometimes people say hey you know it, sometimes uh, other teachers say it's not good to say that's an interesting question or that's a tricky question but if it is it's okay as long as it's true okay so I would start my answer in real life if I had a conversation with someone I would start it with this kind of an expression well that's quite a difficult uh, question to answer accurately as it's nearly impossible to assess the ultimate value of each of these volunteer efforts however if I had to say I would state that helping nature by cleaning up human pollution is the most rewarding in the long run because it directly or indirectly benefits all sectors of society including the needy and ill what i mean is fresh air and water is fundamental to all life okay so give your answer give a reason doesn't have to be perfect doesn't have to be the right choice it just has to be clear logical and agreeable okay all right, um, here we go. So repeat after me. Which of these is the most rewarding and why? 
That's quite a difficult question to answer accurately as it's nearly impossible to assess the ultimate value of each of these volunteer efforts. However, if I had to say, I would state that helping nature by cleaning up human pollution is the most rewarding in the long run because it directly or indirectly benefits all sectors of society, including the needy and the ill. What I mean is fresh air and water is fundamental to all life. Okay. All right. Um, so now we're rolling along nicely. Uh, make sure to use these kinds of connective words like however. Um, show condition if I had to choose or if I had to say and take a position. Okay. It's very important to take a position. All right. Okay. So. Uh, here we go with the next question, students. Let's keep moving along nicely. And again, please, everyone, remember to speak and repeat. So don't just write, but also take a moment to speak and repeat. Okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, how does volunteering benefit society? So how does volunteering benefit society? All right. Saswati so says, volunteering benefits society in difficult times like natural disasters by providing food and shelters to those who have none. Like in my community, we provide hand sanitizer to the homeless to stop the spread of COVID-19. Very nice, Saswati. So it's a good answer. Okay. Onisim says, volunteering is not only beneficial to society by offering assistance to those in need, but it is also an effective modality to enhance citizens' humanitarian responsibility and empathy for one another. What a beautiful answer, Onisim. Absolutely. Um, enhancing citizens' humanitarian responsibility and empathy for one another. Yeah, goodwill to all men. Very good, Onisim. That is a wonderful answer. Okay. Alex Joseph says, volunteering makes significant contributions to the global economy. It not only increases the social network between communities and neighborhoods, but also helps uh, lower the class of poor people. Very good, Alex. Also a very nice answer. Uh, satisfying times, Chabi. Uh, volunteering can definitely raise a sense of responsibility for individuals as well as reassure the relations between different parts of society, making the gap between the rich and the poor less obvious. Very nice answer again. Okay, so uh, obviously creating more equality. Hina, well, volunteering always has a great impact on society, such as helping the homeless by providing shelter to them and a good place to stay. Very good. Hina, very good. A little bit more, maybe. A little bit more. Bisser says, I believe that volunteering is contagious because these activities help both people and nature. For example, when I started my volunteer activities, I had five followers, and now our group has over 50 people. Okay, Bisser, I'm still not 100%, so it's not quite complete. Okay, be really careful to target the exact question. Okay, uh, Rimshaw says volunteering helps build a more cohesive, safer, and stronger community, increasing the social network between communities and neighborhoods. Rimshaw, that's a really nice answer. Uh, volunteering promotes people to be more active uh, in civic engagements and more concerned citizens. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, here you can use that very popular word that everybody seems to pick up from these YouTube videos. There are a plethora. <laughs> this is where that word is actually very useful. There are a plethora of ways that donating one's time can help develop the community. It enhances individual sense of responsibility and a respect towards others and nature. 
in this way, in these ways, volunteering leads to an overall improved quality of life. whereby people suffer less and not only enjoy the company of others more, but also build self-esteem. I certainly felt these merits when I did my volunteering back in February. All right. Again, making that connection to that part two, right? Whenever you can throw in that little connective clip, um, you're going to be uh, chalking up some points on your uh, speaking section of the exam. So repeat after me, students. How does volunteering benefit society. There are a plethora of ways that donating one's time can help develop the community. It enhances individual sense of responsibility and a respect towards others and nature. In these ways, volunteering leads to an overall improved quality of life whereby people suffer less and not only enjoy the company of others more, but also build self-esteem. I certainly felt these merits when I did my volunteering back in February. Okay. Now, I'm speaking quite fluently there. That is a native, natural speed of English. That's about how fast you will hear people speak uh, in the Northwest Coast, Seattle, Vancouver, San Francisco, Los Angeles. Some other parts of North America, like New York, you'll even hear people speaking quite a bit faster. So, And in some places, a little bit slower as well. So this is about average. Okay. All right, so let's uh, get to the next question. How about the individuals who do volunteer work? So how does it benefit them? Okay, so how about people, how about the individuals who do the volunteer work? Again, part three, follow-up after follow-up after follow-up, a complete, clear Answer is roughly as much as you can fit into one chat dialogue, okay? So sometimes students ask me, how long should my answer be? About as much as you can fit into one chat dialogue, maybe a little bit more even, just like a sentence more at times, okay? All right. Sarav Deep Singh says, the individuals who do volunteer are brave, helpful, responsible, and they do their jobs honestly. They do to take care of their families side by side. Uh, Sarav Deep, I think you missed the question a little bit. So um, if the, the first question is, how does volunteering benefit society? And the next question is, uh, how about individuals who do the volunteer work? Then what the examiner is actually asking you students is, um, how, does, how does volunteer work a benefit the individual doing the work. So that would be the actual intent of that question. Okay. Zen says, in terms of such, being a volunteer gains a lot of relationships with different organizations. This not only builds an individual's interpersonal skills, but also drives their opportunities to work and study. Very nice answer, Zen. You can probably uh, connect that to part two as well, right, Zen? But a fantastic answer nonetheless. Of course, when we get together in groups and we do or we make a collective effort, especially when it's altruistic, that will help to build our interpersonal skills. Absolutely. Shobha, clinical psychologist, says volunteering benefits the volunteer in many ways. It fosters a sense of responsibility and promotes universal brotherhood. Uh, instead of universal uh, brotherhood, uh, Shobha, I, it's clear, but I would probably use the word camaraderie instead, camaraderie. Okay, I'll write that up in a second in the answer. 
All right. Um, Chetan says, anybody who does volunteer work uh, feels good about themselves uh, and feel it feels happy to help others. They stay motivated and uh, gain a sense of confidence. Okay, Chetan, not bad. A little bit of uh, grammatical word use uh, mistakes there, but uh, overall not bad. Okay, just work on grammar. Pooja says, individuals who volunteer seems to live a very content life. They find happiness and growth in the betterment of society. Also, they stand as role models, imparting a sense of moral responsibility. Not bad, Pooja. Um, it's a little bit off topic because I think you're talking more about um, how volunteers are perceived by society um, rather than the benefits gained by that volunteer. That's you're, you're answering that, but it's a little bit indirect. Okay, uh, you want to be a little bit more direct with your answer. All right, Tenzin says individuals who always volunteer usually get recognized by society where people look up to them as role models, uh, which gives them self-satisfaction for their work. That's good. So Tenzin, your answer is quite similar to Pooja's, but with a little bit of an important difference uh, whereby you explain what that position in society as a role model gives to the volunteer, a sense of self-satisfaction and confidence, right? So <clears throat> aside from gaining a sense of greater self, and being happy and content with the efforts that volunteers provide to society, those who give their time and energy altruistically are also building their interpersonal relationships and gain camaraderie eventually such networking often leads to prosperous opportunities in school and work and employment Let's say all right Um, altruistic, uh, by the way, students, this word that I just corrected here for the spelling, altruistic or altruistically uh, means to uh, do or to give to someone or something uh, without expecting a return. Now, technically, that doesn't completely exist, but more or less, that's what volunteering is. So altruistic means to uh, give help or to provide without expecting anything in return, okay? And camaraderie um, is what uh, a, a student defined as, um, as a universal brotherhood. So camaraderie is a sense of friendship, belonging, or uh, brotherhood, okay? Or sisterhood. All right. Okay, let's go to the next question. Nice uh, responses, by the way. I must say, I tip my hat uh, to all of you for the wonderful effort that you're putting into your answers using some brilliant vocabulary and very nice fluent responses. Now, make sure to practice saying these students, okay? So uh, recording yourself on your phone, listening back, correcting, saying it faster. Those are some ways that you can build your fluency, your pronunciation. So uh, make sure to do that regularly. All right, uh, here we go with the next question from the examiner. Uh, what can governments do to encourage people to donate their time to assist others? 
So give me a nice full sentence for this one. So what can governments do to encourage people to donate their time to assist others? All right, Kevin says, there are a few measures that those in power can do to adopt and to incentivize volunteer work. One is to give civil credit points, which can be used to get discounts when shopping, as the Chinese government is currently doing. Also, by praising and rewarding good deeds in social media, more people would be motivated to give up their time and energy to assist others without monetary incentive. Yeah, without financial incentive. Sure, Kevin, very good. Okay, very nice answer. Roshni says, well, higher authorities can spread awareness in communities to donate their valuable time to aid others, as well as rewarding the volunteers, like in uh, Indian Unkit, awarded by Padam Pushan for being selfless. Okay, Roshni, very good. So uh, giving awards, yeah, public recognition, right? It's also called public recognition. All right. Saravdeep, it's my imaginary hat that I'm tipping to you. I actually do have quite a few neat hats, but I don't wear them in live classes. That would be a little bit weird, and it would block the screen. All right, um, so uh, Omar Ashraf uh, says, that's an interesting question. Uh, governments have many ways to encourage individuals to donate for society, such as making advertisements. Also, they can encourage volunteering over the internet by promoting it through social media. Okay, again, careful students, donating time, that's volunteering, but otherwise donating means to give money. So be really careful with the way you use that uh, word donating. Okay, Donating on its own just means to give money or to give clothes or some other, like donate food. Okay, it means to give without asking for money. All right, Bisser, in some countries, people who donate money for charity are free from taxes, but apart from that, governments can give awards to people who do volunteer jobs. All right, Bisser, that's much more on mark. Uh, in the beginning, that's a little bit off because donating money and volunteering, again, not the exact same. Um, tax benefits for charitable donations, that's a little bit different. So careful, careful. Seni Surani says the government can so, can communicate with society to do volunteer work by uh, benefiting um, such organizations uh, as abundant volunteer work is being done by many people. Seni, a little bit awkward, a little bit difficult to understand exactly what you're getting at. Really focus in on some clear targeted ideas. Okay, some really clear targeted ideas. All right. Uh, Rajveer says, authorities can do a couple of activities to motivate people to volunteer. They can make volunteering mandatory in order to hire people for federal jobs. Uh, yeah, okay, very good, Rajveer. Um, Rajveer, have you been to Canada? It almost sounds like you have uh, because uh, there are many jobs and um, school uh, applications which actually require uh, people to volunteer um, and I think it's the same in many countries as well like in the US and uh, Canada if somebody is studying to be a doctor or a nurse for instance or even a veterinarian um, then uh, volunteer work is mandatory you have to have volunteer work on your application and I said this last class students that if you're planning to move to some of these countries like Australia or Canada or even to do your uh, master's or uh, university studies, I very, very strongly recommend doing volunteer work and also getting a proof of your volunteer work, okay? So when you do your volunteer work, just get a piece of paper, uh, even with just a couple of sentences that says, I'm the main organizer for volunteering to help the homeless people in downtown Dubai area and uh, 
this person, Rajveer Singh, has contributed 100 hours of their time. Uh, thank you for the effort. And just a kind of a letter like that that you can take with you for your immigration or for your school application can be of huge benefit for countries like Canada and the U.S. Australia. Okay, so uh, that's really I highly, highly recommend that. Okay, so federal authorities. It's very official, but it's a nice paraphrase. Can motivate their citizens in a number of ways to volunteer. They can incentivize uh, job opportunities and um, educational applications by making it mandatory to have a certain number of recorded volunteer hours, like a minimum of uh, 200 hours volunteer work at a hospital to apply for medical school. Of course, they can spend some of their budget to advertise the benefits of volunteering through TV and social media. Ooh, lots of typos in my typing today. Maybe I'm typing a bit too fast. All right. Um, okay, here we go. So, uh, again, uh, read and uh, repeat. So, read and repeat. Okay. Uh, if you feel really confident, don't read, just repeat. Here we go. Uh, what can governments do to encourage people to donate their time to assist others? Uh, federal authorities can motivate their citizens in a number of ways to volunteer. They can incentivize job opportunities and educational applications by making it mandatory to have a certain number of recorded volunteer hours, like a minimum of 200 hours volunteer work at a hospital to apply for medical school. Of course, they can spend some of their budget to advertise the benefits of volunteering, through TV and social media. All right. Uh, can you elaborate? Hmm, what do you do when you've already given so much information? I think you can. You can always elaborate. Uh, you just have to be creative. So can you elaborate? Can you give more information on that? What do you mean? How do you mean? Can you be more specific? Sydney says, I think I'm able to elaborate on that. I will emphasize that to develop our own society in many fields, especially the fields that are not popular or profitable, like education in rural areas, I think uh, we need to use many dedicated volunteer workers, uh, which need to be uh, encouraged through these kinds of methods by the uh, government. Okay, Sydney, that's good. I like where you're going with that. All right, some more answers, more answers. So can you elaborate? Sarav Deep says, mm, moreover, governments can raise their voice by awarding people about the donation of giving to organizations. To rewarding uh, those people who are in this field can help bring more people to that field. Okay, Sarav Deep, it's a little bit confusing, but I get what you're trying to say with that, maybe try to revise it, say it a little bit in a little bit more detail, okay? 
Alex says, for example, in Canada, it is mandatory for people to apply for certain jobs to have a certain number of hours as volunteers under their belt. Other countries can, can take a cue from this and follow suit. Very good, Alec. Um, you're using an example. That's one of the easiest ways to elaborate is to use an example. Okay. So one of the easiest and fastest ways to elaborate is to give an example. Now, students, it doesn't have to be real. It does not need to be real. It just needs to be believable. Okay? Believe me, the uh, examiner is not going to Google your example to, say, to see if that's true. If it's believable, they'll just say, okay, person elaborated, check. Let's keep going. Pooja says, well, to further elaborate, my experience at the agricultural university that I'm applying to demands at least 100 hours of volunteer work in the farming community. Uh, very good, Pooja. Um, and then you can go into it even a little bit more, Pooja. This has opened my eyes uh, to the benefits of doing such work, and now I encourage others to do so as well. Okay, very good. Um, so that's nice, Pooja. I'm going to take that example. Sure, sure. Uh, in my case, I'm applying um, to do my master's at the Agricultural University and my program admission requirement includes a minimum of 100 hours of volunteer work uh, in the farming community, which I had completed. And this experience has opened my eyes to the benefit of doing such work. And now I share this belief with my social sphere. All right. Very good. Okay. Nice work. Mediha says, well, the superpowers can encourage and motivate organizations to increase their element of social responsibility towards specializations that they already have resources for. Uh, Mediha, that kind of sounds more like a repetition than an elaboration. Uh, be really careful, students, that when you're asked to elaborate, don't just repeat because that will not work for your better score, okay? So uh, careful uh, to not only repeat what you had already said. Uh, this is the reason... An example is usually the better option. Okay. All right. Okay, so repeat after me. Sure. In my case, I'm applying to do my master's at the Agricultural University, and my program admission requirement includes a minimum of 100 hours of volunteer work in the farming community, which I had completed, and this experience has opened my eyes to the benefits of doing such work, and now I share this belief with my social sphere. Okay, so that's motivating through the efforts of the government, right? Okay, all right. Uh, Chetan saying, uh, then it's good. We have practical knowledge before getting into theory. Thanks, Roshni. All right, I think there's a little bit of Communication among peers there, which is good. I encourage you to communicate amongst your peers. All right. Um, so if you're doing a really good job in your part three and you're building some good fluency and answering all the questions nice and quick, 
uh, there's a very good chance that the examiner might shift topics slightly, still connected to part two, and they might introduce a secondary topic like uh, let's talk about social responsibility. Let's talk about social responsibility. And then they'll go right into the question. Uh, what are day-to-day -day actions that people need to pay attention to for society to function well? Now, don't be surprised if these questions seem even more difficult and uh, uncommon than the previous. That's because if they get to this point, there's a very good chance that you're going to get a band seven or a band eight. And the examiner is now testing to see whether you are actually a band nine expert communicator, someone who can comprehend an even unusual question like this and give a good coherent response. Okay. All right. Uh, so what are day-to-day -day actions that people need to pay attention to for society to function well? And it's social responsibility. So a little bit different. Okay. Can anybody give me an answer for that one? I'll type one up while you're thinking about it. Okay. All right. Chabi says, besides holding a great relation with the neighborhood, individuals can participate in uh, city unions in order to raise society's inquiries to higher authorities for faster responses. Um, in that case, Chabi, I would ask you, what do you mean? Okay. So Puja says, small activities like donating a part of your meal to help the disabled and teaching the underprivileged uh, would do much more than uh, accomplish the responsibility. Okay, a little bit off topic, so it's tricky, students. Uh, Kevin says, as society is governed, as society is governed based on laws, it's vital that citizens observe those uh, strictly, not only to keep themselves out of trouble, but also to maintain social order. As well, people need to protest against disruptive behaviors like looting or arson, arson. Kevin, when uh, people set houses on fire, the uh, perfect word for that in English is arson, A-R-S-O-N, arson, okay? All right, uh, kind of similar to my answer. There are certain rules which are established by society, such as traffic laws, which are in place to protect individuals and the greater group. These must be respected in order for society to function optimally. Okay. Uh, or as Kevin said, to keep social order, social order and society functioning optimally are synonymous. So very good vocabulary with that, Kevin. All right. Um, so students, uh, there are some more questions here for you to practice at home on your own. Which of these has been difficult for many people to do regularly? Why is this? If people do not act with responsibility towards other members in their community, what may be the consequences? How can this be avoided? So there are some more questions. You can try those on your own or you can try them with some partners on our uh, website as well. Again, there's uh, free speaking on our website. So make sure to check that out when you have a minute. And if you like this video and you want lots more videos in HD without advertising, learn at your own pace, uh, please visit our website, aehelp.com, for academic IELTS. Join the premium package there. And for general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. That's all the time for this week. I will be back next week 
on Wednesday at the same time with a fresh new speaking part one for everyone to practice. If you found this class a little bit challenging, that one will be a little bit easier, a little bit simpler questions, of course. It's part one. So hopefully I'll see you on Wednesday. I will post the schedule for next week uh, in a few moments. I hope all of you have a lovely rest of your weekend or a lovely Sunday, wherever you're on this beautiful world. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay strong. Much love to all of you. Bye for now.